Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to uh, the July webinar from Open Alex. Really excited today to have a guest speaker, Trang Lee, who is one of the, the key developers of Open Alex R. We hear all the time that people are trying to use our API with Open Alex R to get the data and then do really cool analyses. Um, this is a product that was developed by Trang and her team, so we're really excited to have them talk about how they can use it. I'm not going to say much more than that. I am going to um, hand it over to Trang in a minute. But just a reminder, if you haven't been here before, feel free to put questions um, in the in the Q&A. And my colleague Jason Portnoy and I will try and address them live if they're about Open Alex. And then if there's time at the end, um, we'll stop the recording and do a live Q&A with Trang on, on questions that are related to Open Alex R. So with that, I'll turn it over to you, Trang. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Jason. Um, all right, I am sharing my screen. And uh, yeah, Kyle, let me know if there's anything that comes up in the middle of this, but um, I assume that everything is going according to plan. At this point, my name is Chang, like Kyle mentioned, I'm uh, one of the co-authors of Open Alex R. And uh, yeah, very honored to be invited by Open Alex to um, present this webinar to you. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be helpful to, to a lot of you who uses open alex on an everyday basis um okay so what you're seeing right now is my r studio ide and um this qmd file is um a coro notebook um basically it's very similar to an r markdown notebook um where you have some text and then some code chunks here and i'm going to run the code chunks by hitting display button but you can also do that um, line by line, but hit command enter or command shift enter for running the entire chunk. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, oh, and I've moved the console to the right here so that it's a little bit e easier for everyone to follow. Um, but yeah, with that, let's get started. If you haven't really um, already installed Banalex R, or if you have, but it's been a while, we actually just had a new release that came out last week on CRAN. So be sure to grab that one so that you have all the bugs fixed and everything, um, the latest uh, of OpenAlex R. And like with any other R packages, you run it, uh, you install it by running install.packages like this one. I'm not gonna run this one because um, I already have it installed here. Um, but let's go ahead and also load in the tidyverse package here. Um, and I think we should have, you can also check quickly the package version of OpenAlexR and see what we have. So I have 1.4.0, which is the latest one on CRAN. I'm happy about that. Um, oh, but before we get go any further, I do want to recommend you set the openalexr.mail to option in your Dart R environment file. This way, um, your requests go to the polite pool. Um, so you get faster response time and just in general, um, the Open Alex team knows who you're who's making this request. So that's helpful for them. Um, and of course, if you have the premium subscription, you can add your API key as well using the openalexr.api key option. Um, you can open that file. I'm not going to open this because it has all of um, my API key in it, but um, you can open it by running file.edit in, in your console. All right, so after loading all this in, this is just to set some themes so we have some nice plots later. You don't have to worry about that. Throughout this webinar, I'm going to use this pipe symbol, um, basically a vertical line and a greater than sign, as you see here. Um, then this is called an R base pipe introduced to R um, version 4.0 and above. and um, Essentially, way so instead of calling g of f of x, um, it's x and then f and then g. So just a slightly different um, order, but hopefully it, it's going to be clear as we go through the webinar. All right. So the main function of OpenAlex R is open uh, OA fetch. Um, so if I run this, the help page should open up. Oop. Nope. <laughs> One sec. I tested it on a different computer earlier and that worked. Um, anyhow, so we have OA fetch here. The main arguments of OA fetch is entity. So in this case, you can have works, authors, institutions, and so on. 
identifier, if you know the identifier of your open addicts um, entity that, that you want to fetch. Um, and then these three dots here, it's a little bit e filters that you generally use um, with open addicts in here. And then of course, some other arguments. So first example, let's say we have, we know we want to grab this work and we know it's open Alex ID. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run this chunk. Maybe, maybe it's not letting me, let me see if I can switch to source. So what you're seeing here in the quarter notebook is the visual view. Um, but if we switch to source, maybe that will work better. Okay. Let me see if I, I'm going to, uh, my Corto is not quite working, so I'll have to copy and paste. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and through its chunk, copy and paste. The run button should work, but um, maybe I needed to <laughs> refresh or something. Give me one second. I'm going to go ahead and restart. All right. Just yeah, no worries. That's the the courage of coding live. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. <laughs> I recently updated my Cordo on this computer, so there might be something that I haven't fully done. Um, but I thought this run button worked earlier. One, one more. I'm gonna try to refresh it one more time and see if. It's also good because it gave me time to install the latest update of OpenLXR. So thanks for that <laughs> tip. <laughs> um, oh, and another tip in our studio is that you, if you're trying to look for a file, you can do a control dot and that would pull this up. And so I can search for my OpenLXR webinar quarter document by doing that instead of having to go to files. So just a tip for everyone. Let's try one more time. Yep. Okay. Now, now that works. Oh, but I actually don't want to install. Okay. All right. So everything is working. Um, set theme. Okay. Oh, but we're, it seems that we keep going back to the beginning of the document for some reason. Um, but okay. So let's see if this works. Okay. So that is working. Um, all right, back to where we were. First example is when you know an open Alex R, uh, sorry, open Alex ID for work. And so what you want to put in here is ID and then um, entity of course works. In this case, it could have guessed, um, but I want it often to be explicit of what uh, what entity I'm, I'm pulling. Um, and for both equals true, it's just generally a good idea because you can kind of see um, the the URL that you're using to requesting this information from Open Alex. All right. So what is returned in this case? This is a tibble work. My object here is the tibble. And for those who have not really worked with the tidyverse before, it's very similar to a data frame, except that um, we see something here, like for example, with the author column that is called a list column. It allows us to kind of nest information inside the work object. Um, another tip. To view this work object interactively in RStudio, you can, um, there's two ways. The first way is you hit environment here and you can click on work and it would pull up this view for you. Another way, say you don't really want to open this up, you can hold down command, click on the work object, and that shows the work object for you as well. And that works with function really well if you want to get to the internal of a, or the code of a function. But back to our work object, we see ID, title. So again, as you can see, it's very similar to a data frame, except this column author right here, we see, um, we don't really see what's in here, but you can click on it um, to pull this up. So it's, as you can see, kind of like a data frame inside a data frame. Um, 
And we decided to use Tibble because it's nice. You can export this as a Parquet file or an RS, or RDS file. I don't recommend exporting as a CSV because it's kind of flattened everything out and you might lose, uh, you, you will probably lose information such as author like this one. Um, but it allows you to, you know, kind of view and, and do a lot of things with it. So that is our data frame. You can view it interactively. You can write out as CSV. Um, you can look at it using this stir function, um, basically a skim view of, of what the table is about, how many rows, how many columns, and so on. Um, OK. We also provide this show works function, but I'm not going to um, I'm just going to comment this out. I don't think we need this. This is basically just to print it pretty for the website um, that we, we can send out a link later as well to this entire code. So don't worry about not following everything. Um, but this is basically just to print the work object. Um, all right. OK, so that was our first example. What if you don't know the work uh, ID, the open Alex ID for that work that you wanted to get, or a few works that you wanted to get, um, you can use filters. So just like how you would go to openalex.org and do a few filters here and there, um, basically you can put these filters inside the OAFedge function as well. The first example that I'm going to go over is using DOI. So um, digital object identifier. Um, I'm sure a lot of most people here in the webinar would know what this is, but basically we have different DOIs here. Um, plugging into your your DOI, you're putting it in C here. I hope if you're familiar with R, you know, this is um, a vector, a character vector that you put into the DOI as a uh, filter field in OpenAlex. And then again, verbose equals true should get you what you need. Um, similarly, you can do, um, you can use a different filter that is called author orchid. Um, again, you can use the full orchid or just kind of the simplified version of it, um, without the HTTPS dot, um, slash orchid dot org here. And that should work also. All right. Um, and then you can combine many filters at once. So let's say our goal here is to download all works that have been cited more than 50 times, published between 2020 and 2021, and include the strings bibliometric analysis or science mapping in the title. And then maybe we also want to store the results to be sorted by total citation in descending order. Um, so again, I'm setting my entity equals works. <clears throat> in title search, I'm going to put in the phrases that I was searching for. I want, oh, I said 50 times here, my bad. That was um, 100 times, so cited by count larger than 100 times. Form publication since day to publication date are the two fields that OpenAlex accepts. And then um, we will talk a little bit more about options later. It's in the more advanced usage, but basically in options, I can say sort equals um, cited by count descending. And so if I run this, again, I get the same. Well, it's showing the top six row, but when you actually work at look at the returned object, which I just did by holding down the command line, uh, command key and click on the works below object here, um, you see the return table. Okay. So what if we use the wrong, a wrong filter? So let's say we want to sample 10 works published in 2024 and say we mistakenly use year instead of publication year as a filter. We do this. Um, it will return a, an error and Kind of um, what OpenAlex R is trying to do is passing that error that OpenAlex is giving to you um, through through the through R basically, and so we see year is not a valid field, valid fields are underscore hyphenated versions, and so on and so forth. So you see all um, 
the different possible fields that you can filter on. And in here, you will also see um, publication year being part of valid filters. And so what you can do, oh, this I already figured out, so I shouldn't need that. Um, instead of using year, you can do publication year instead. So if I run that, it should work. And so what you see is um, the works, the random works that were um, published in 2024. Um, you can also search for works related to, so, so far we've covered, you know, if you know a certain, uh, if you know an exact uh, open Alex ID for your entity, if you don't know, these are kind of the filter options. Um, now we're on to search. So you can do default search, abstract search, title search. Right now I'm saying, um, let's say we want to fetch the first few works of which abstracts include the phrase urban heat island. So if I do that, I can put in here abstract.search equals urban heat island. Um, and then again, I'm only sample for 10 so that the, the query is faster. Um, and you will see, again, the return tibble. Um, there's a lot more to read about surge. And um, if you're an advanced user, you know about stemming and kind of how it works, uh, so how search works. So I encourage you to um, go to the docs and, and read more if you're wanting to make sure that, you know, you're, you're searching for the right thing. Um, there are, for other entities, um, so we, we've talked a lot about works um, and most of that is gonna apply exactly the same way to other entities. You may, you won't have, you will have a different field for filtering, um, but generally a lot of these, um, the way that you use OAFedge is gonna be the same. So for example, right now I'm searching for two authors my co-author of Open Addicts R and also a colleague, Oigen here, um, and I can even add Kyle in here. Um, but basically you can search for display name in this case. Um, and let's say, I don't want, um, I, I want the, the authors that have published more than 10 publications. Hopefully those are the records that you know match the, the authors that I want. So hitting, run again, I see that my table now has three um, different authors here and um, one, let's see, okay. So let's say, and I'm going to authors. You'll see the display name alternatives, um, IDs, relevant score. So relevant score is, uh, is, a, is a column that appears when you use the search functionality. Um, Orgid, works count, cited by count, counts by year, so on. So again, this, this table is really a simplified version of what Open Alex gives you. Um, if you need more information, which I talk about below, one thing that you can do is using, instead of the tibble output, you can specify output equals list. So let's say, oop. Oh, it did not like the fact that I'm, on the last line there. And what it does is essentially return to you everything that OpenLX gives you, but in a list. Um, and so in here, you can manipulate the list by yourself, um, figuring out, you know, oh, say you just want to look at the first author of each of these works or something. Um, you, you have a lot more control when you return the output as a list instead of a tibble. Um, so that's something that I, I wanted to mention. Um, we'll do a quick time check here. I'm at 23. Um, maybe we'll do a
couple examples, but in the website, on the website where I post this webinar code, um, there will be some coding challenges. So if you're interested, you can take a look, um, see if you want to tackle some of these challenges. And, and um, I also have the solution there. So um, yeah, check it out if you would like. Um, all right, so going on to kind of a more comprehensive example of using OpenAlexR, let's say in this case, we want to analyze the open access status of data sets published by researchers at Dartmouth College uh, over the years. Dartmouth is near me, so um, I'm picking Dartmouth and um, data sets because um, this is a, a follow up to the last webinar where uh, Kyle talked about data sets and, and new things coming to OpenAlex. So this is very exciting. And um, yeah, I hope people take a look. Um, the entity is still works at the, at this point. Um, but in this case, your type is going to be data set. And if you put this in here, um, I'm going to just sample for maybe 500 for now. Well, let's see. Let's see if, if we can just run this and 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 it runs. All right, so it doesn't take that long. Um, perfect, okay. So let me walk you through the code and see what it's doing here. We have OA fetch, as we know, um, authorships, institutions, lineage. So I grab this, there's a few ways to do this, right? So say so you don't know Dartmouth College Open Alex ID, what you can do is you can go to openalex.org, search for Dartmouth. Here. Um, and I believe, oh, I think last time what Kyle did is he hit this information button here that gets you to the um, Dartmouth College page. And in the API, you're gonna see the uh, Open Alex ID for that particular institution. Um, I think there's another obvious place somewhere. That I'll I'm... just I'll chime in quickly. The way that you first did it, where it popped up that filter. If you just click on that filter, it should say it. Right, like right there. If you oh, click on that. Oh, okay. I was too nervous to click anything. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Perfect. So yeah, thank you, Kyle. So this right here uh, also gets you the ID as well. Um, or you can do it programmatically if you don't want to go to a new web browser. You can search for um, institution, um, and then you can do display name search, Dartmouth College, and then get the ID, basically that ID. Anyhow, um, OpenAlex has a pay. There was a recent request on why do we have to kind of do this in two steps, and I think um, there's a clear answer reason on 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 the web page. So I encourage you to read it there. But basically, once you know the institution ID, you can put it in authorship's institution lineage, publication year. Um, and in this case, I can use the plus sign, um, no penalics, but um, I do want to be explicit in this case, just so you can see a little bit clearer the fields uh, filtering. So um, basically, when you put a lot of filters inside OA fetch, um, it's kind of doing an and. Um, concatenating all these filters. So I want the authors from this from Dartmouth College and the publication year is larger than 2000. So after 2000 and a publication year before 2024. So um, if you want to do that type of and, instead of using the plus sign, you can use, um, you can do it multiple times within OAFEDGE and that works. Um, which I think is pretty neat in, in R because this is not, you know, having kind of a, the same argument Repeated twice is not um, a common thing that you see. Um, and then type equals data set. We have different options that you can use. Um, in this case, uh, I, I, I only wanted kind of the, I'm interested in only the open access status of these data sets. And so I don't wanna grab everything. I don't care much about authors and, and um, other parts related to the work cited by anything like that. So what I'm grabbing right now is only ID, open access, NIST, and um, publication year. That's it. So when that happened, my uh, work at Dartmouth, my data sets at Dartmouth looks something like this. We have ID, 
um, we have is OA anywhere, is OA, uh, OA status, open access status, open access URL, publication year, um, and then the full text repository. Um, all right, so that looks good, looks like what I needed. And then a bunch of code down here is just to make this nice plot for you. Um, again, basically just to set colors and so on. Um, looking at the number of data sets over the years. And I know that this is only kind of preliminary because OpenAlex is still ingesting more and more data sets as um, in the coming months. So this is not the end all be all result, but um, also interesting to, to kind of take a look. And I know this is one question that a lot of people are interested in answering and, you know, um, in your library and in your institution, how 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 many people are publishing? What's the trend over the years? And um, you know, are, are they doing it open access? So um, hopefully that's an interesting example for you to look at. Um, another example, um, maybe you can read the journal clock example online, but I wanted to kind of bring up a recent use of Open Alex that I had to do. Um, so what I needed was to find all the authors. So the goal was to find all authors that have published to this journal called um, Heterocycles or Heterocycles. Um, and let's say, so what I did at first um, was going to Open Alex and search for heterocycles, the journal. And in here, you see all the works. Um, but I don't see any authors yet. However, I can add author. And in here, if I click on more, I do see the top authors here. However, I'm not sure um, how I can grab everyone. And so I thought, well, maybe if this doesn't satisfy my search, I can look at the API and see what it looks like. So in my URL, I noticed that there's a group by, it's hard for you to see here, but I'm gonna copy it in a moment. Um, and with each of these page, you are, you're gonna see only 200 records. So to get to the next page, you have to, you know, well, generally you would have to work with um, cursor and, and paging and so on, but Open Alex R is, takes care of all of that for you. So you shouldn't have to worry. Once you know your filter and group by and so on, it should work. So let me come back to my R. And if Copilot is working, um, once I have, once I put in this query here, now it's it's not understanding, it's not seeing that I'm using Open Alex yet. So let me type this here. Let me start with OA fetch. And let's see if it can fill fill in. Oh, I don't want my query. I want <laughs> because okay, let's see if I can just ignore this query for now. Let's see if it knows. Okay, now Copilot is picking up that I want this URL here and I'm doing a group by per page and so on. Okay, so I'm gonna hit tab, group by that works. Okay, um, now this is not right, but I'm just gonna let it be for a moment. So in open in OA fetch, we don't have um, a filter uh, argument. So what we actually have to do is kind of bring this out here and that that happen. And uh, per page is default at 200, so I actually don't need that. Um, but now if I run this, which actually will take a little bit of time because the group by is, um, there, there are I think over 30,000 authors. Um, so it's actually doing quite a bit of work here. Um, but that was to show you kind of how I go back and forth a lot between the openalex.org um, interface here to try to get to the API, getting kind of, you know, the the actual um, 
the source ID that I need and the actual um, field, because sometimes I don't remember what fields are available. So going back and forth between the the, the interface, the web interface and, and R is um, very helpful. Um, let me see. So that's, that's one more example. Um, let me do another time check. Maybe I'll talk quickly kind of a different topics in the advanced usage, um, but won't do any code here. Um, and maybe we'll open up for Q and A. All right. So that's, that's done. Um, and I think a quick tip here. So as you can see earlier, I did not assign any value for, um, this result. Um, so a trick is that I say, oh man, I forgot to you know assign this to say um, heterocycles authors. But what I can do instead of rerunning that, I can do last value. Um, and effectively what it does is that it put in the environment, it just grab whatever that were just printed in my console and more. Um, whatever the result of that call is into my um, object here in, in R. So th I think another that's another helpful trick, especially if you don't wanna, you know, you have a big call and you don't wanna repeat that and, and put stress, more stress on the API. Um, this is something you can do. Okay. Um, I mentioned options a little bit earlier in OA fetch. Um, you can ha you have select, which you can see you can find fields to show in the output when you want to kind of um, quicken up your your, your queries. Um, you can sort. You can sample and seed. I think um, those are pretty straightforward. You can um, build your own query. So I know I've only shown. Um, OA fetch use, but let's say you have your own query like earlier, I have this query already. So instead of having to say, <sighs> building that again, I can have that query. And then down here, I can say OA Oh, did we lose me or you? I cannot hear you, um, but if you can hear me, that's great. I can finish up. It's the yes. end. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think I can hear everyone now. Sorry about that. Heath. No worries. For being patient with all of my technical issues here. Okay. Um, I, I was just in the middle of saying that instead of using OA fetch, you can use OA request and then OA to DF to kind of, if you have your query built already um, from OpenLX or, or how, however you build your query. Um, not not going to have OA generate, but you can do OA snowball. So snowball analyses. I, I know a lot of uh, folks like doing that and looking for related works and, and cited works of a certain set of works. Um, we have ngram support. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think <clears throat> I'll stop here before my internet goes out any longer. Um, and maybe this is a good time for a Q and A. Yeah, that was great. Um, I'll just quickly say thank you very much for this. I really appreciate it. For those of you who are, um, trying to follow along, she has graciously made this all publicly available and is going to share a link so that you can do any of these things on there. Um, I've personally already looked at a couple and used them on my own. So they're really helpful as a, as a starting point. Um, I'll stop the recording now and we'll open it up for Q&A. But thank you again, Trang. Really appreciate that. Thanks, Kaya.